Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at PNW Sundome checking team number 2910, Jack and the Bot. This team has an incredible history. They've been building throughout the years, especially last year where they won PNW at District Champs and also Division Champions at noon last year too. Jack and the Bot this year brings another fantastic robot that we'll be showcasing here. So compact, every year this team has been so quick on the field and always ranking up there on the FRC Top 25. Let's talk more about Jack and the Bot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Right now, let's start off with, uh, I think, you know, one thing we hear about Jack and the Bot is uh, score drives every single year. Now, score's becoming a lot more common, but I think Jack and the Bot's really the quintessential team when it comes to score, especially SDS score. Let's talk about that a little bit, and then we're going to go through all the awesome mechanical features on your robot, too. All right, so we have our swerve drive modules. Um, we have MK4i, and this enables us, you know, all 360-degree um, movement and swerve. So it really helps us with our speed and maneuverability. Something I'll, I'll ask you is uh, you, your team has been doing Swerve for so long. What advice do you have for other teams who are looking at getting into Swerve? Um, there's a lot of support out there because there has been like history of Swerve. So just reaching out, knowing where your resources are can help you a lot. Let's talk more about uh, some of the other mechanical features of the robot. I see you got a giant arm uh, with that intake. We've got one yes, right sir. next to you here as well, too. So talk to me about some of the inspiration behind it. How some of the design worked out for you and uh, how it's working out competition. You've had a great year already so far as we're recording this. All right, so one of our goals for this year is just to be fast and compact, as, as always. So what we really wanted to make sure is that we could reach all levels, um, but also have um, really low CG as well. So what we wanted to do is a two-stage. This is a two-stage elevator, um, and it's telescoping and it allows our um, movement and collection on any levels. So so can we break this down one at a time with the uh, intake? Talk to me about the inspiration behind the intake. All right. uh, how did you come up with like using this type of roller design? Any other things maybe that didn't work out for Jack and Bot as well? Yes, so this is our iterations. We went through a lot of iterations. This is, I think, our, about like our third major iteration. So we started first with like wheels, but we wanted something for our intake to be light and also a touch it, own it intake. So essentially, whenever it comes in contact with the game piece, it sucks it up right in. So this is a dual game piece intake. Um, it intakes cubes through this, and then it intakes cones through this. So um, we decided on rollers, um, dead axle roller, and um, it's just really fast and compact as well. So that's why we decided on the roller design. And then on your arm itself, as we uh, come through here, uh, you know, your, your arm is so compact and, you know, a lot of telescoping going on with it. Just talking about how did you come up with this and how are you able to package this so efficiently every year, too? Lots of integration. So before the season starts, we our design team comes up with, like, something called primary geometry where we all um, use our map out our subsystems on our robot. So that allows, like, integration and to keep everything compact to make sure nothing kind of runs into each other. Can we see a, a little bit of demo? I know we'll be talking about some of the stage in a second, but uh, as things are coming out, let's talk to me a little about kind of what's happening with the robot, too. For sure. All right, so this is a cube intake from the ground. So this configuration is where our robot can intake the cube from ground level. And then this is knocked over cone um, configuration. This is the upright cone. And then this is cube. Cube. Um, our cube intake from the shelf. So our arm and wrist allow our wrist pivot point allows 80 degree movement. Um, so that allows us to score and go on any level essentially, combining the freedom of movement from our pivot back here, our pivot on the wrist, and then our arm telescoping movement. Quinn, there's a lot about automation that goes into this robot as well, too. We just saw a little bit about it, uh, but I'd love to hear more about the uh, the LEDs and some of the other automation that goes on, and of course, describe it as it's happening as well, too. For sure, yeah. So um, if we disable real quick. 
Um, we'll see that the LEDs, when disabled, have two states. They're either red or they're green. Um, if they're green, that means the arm is homed. The way that we home it is either doing it by a button press, or if you get in here, we have two physical buttons on our robot. One of them is uh, labeled H, and that one, when you press it, actually tells the Falcons that this is the home position of the arm, and we'll set that as their zero position. Um, and then the LEDs will start as red. When you press that and they're home, they go to green. Now, if we enable, if you could enable real quick, um, they will either switch between purple to represent a cube or yellow to represent a cone. Um, and then, so that will allow our human player to give us the pieces we desire. Um, and and, and uh, the, the, the second button here, right, because the first one is to home it. But if you disable real quick, um, to start our auto, I won't talk about autos uh, in full yet, but um, we need the arm to be up. So if it's in brake mode, it's very hard to move. So we have this second button here that toggles brake mode. And so we can put it up. And then, Sadir, can you walk around and thank you. Uh, and then if I press that again, Sadir, let go. Now it's in brake mode. And it's going to stay there. And that's how we start our auto. So those are the, those two buttons there that we press at the start of our setup to make sure everything works correctly. And the LEDs give us feedback to make sure everything is working A-OK. -okay. We, we showed off some of your positions a little bit ago on there, too. But is there anything else to add in regards to when uh, programming and how you're able to just get so precise during each match that you're in? Yeah, so, so we just have really well-tuned PID controllers using the encoder values from the, the, the built-in uh, Talon uh, encoders. Uh, and th those allow us to have very fine-tuned control over the position of the extension, the wrist, and the shoulder. Um, and it's all about just getting those PID controllers tuned and as precise as we can without overshoot. Um, yeah. And you guys also have a custom dashboard uh, on your uh, uh, driver station as well. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yep. So I'm the operator, so I interface with this the most. We have three main columns. The first one, we decide which level we want to score at. The second one, we decide which piece we want to have. And then the third is a Boolean that just says, are we upright? Uh, are we intaking an upright cone, or is it just on the ground? Um, and so through the combination of those, we can intake any piece and score at any level. So, dear, let's start to wrap up on this robot. Talk about the uh, autonomous on there. Uh, I just watched you guys play a match. You're doing three game pieces plus balance as well, too. So, talk to me about what's got into it and how you're so successful with it, too. For sure, yeah. So, definitely, as Rainia said, right, uh, you know, this, this idea of being compact and really, you know, uh, precise and I guess modular with our code that applies to our autos as well. So what we did uh, was we, we started using Path Planner this year and what we've actually done is um, each each of our path files is just one waypoint to another waypoint and what we've kind of done is in uh, within our, our class that kind of builds all, our, all of our autonomous uh, uh, sequences uh, we have all these like follow and score, follow while intaking methods, right? And what that allows us to do is it allows, it allows us to be extremely fast in developing these new sort of autos and changing everything. Because the way I like to think of it is it's, it's these really cool building blocks that you can just, you know, string all together to create this really nice orchestrated um, sort of movement of all the subsystems working together. And uh, that's really cool. So we were able to, you know, iterate really fast. And one thing which I'd like to point out, which we're doing especially for our auto, um, is what we like to call our Yoshi tongue. So as uh, you might have seen, Basically, the arm just extends out super far, and we really want to optimize and get all those game pieces and do it within the minimum amount of time, and we've got everything tuned down uh, pretty good. Well, Jack and Abad, thank you so much for uh, telling us more about your robot and taking the time to do so. Uh, as we record this, already one event went under your belt. Looking for another one here at Sundome as well, too. So good luck here, and can't wait to see you uh, at the World Championship as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash FIRST updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash firstupdatesnow. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash firstupdatesnow. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.